I wanted to do a short video to show you my uh, first experiment of making a PVC roller furler. Uh, this is for a 16 foot, precision 16 foot uh, dinghy. And here I'm just laying out the parts. I'm using a one inch PVC, so you need some couplers. Uh, and then the key for making the drum, I'm using these uh, round blank covers, the plastic ones. And you need two sticks of 10 foot uh, PVC and then a short section of one and a quarter. Uh, I got everything at Lowe's is under 50 bucks. So in the next video, I'm going to show you, um, I got, I don't know if they're all like this, but this one had this foam gasket. Um, if you can find them without it, it'll save you a lot of work. It took me quite a while to get all this peeled off and clean. Uh, I don't know if they're, I've never used these before, so, you know, maybe you can find them without. So I'm laying out the parts. Um, I was originally going to make the drum four inch, and then I looked out an example when I bought the boat, and the guy had started on one, and he made it about two inches. So the you'll see as I put it together, I'm sanding. Um, I, I always sand to make them a little easier to dry fit. And... Um, I'm going to use primer and PVC glue, but this just makes it a lot easier to put things together and test and make sure I've got um, a good fit. You know, you hate to put these things together, then you're struggling to pull them apart. Uh, so just sand them and try to get any rough edges, because uh, this will be dancing around on your force day, and you don't want anything rubbing. So here I'm dry fitting, testing, um, making sure that it's all the way, you know, I don't have it all the way in there, but I'll push it all the way in. And then I'm going to get the dimension that I need. I'm going to lay everything out here, see if it'll sit on my dirty tabletop. I've been doing a lot of fiberglass with what all this mess is. So it looks like I need a couple of inches. So on uh, the next shot, I'm going to cut the... I think that's, yeah, it's one and a quarter. I'm showing you there the size. So I've got some PVC cutters, and it works pretty good up to inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Um, takes a couple of hands to do it. Pretty square cut. Um, you can use hacksaw. You can use a PVC saw. Uh, a lot of times I use a chop saw. But in this case, it's... I'm, not after pretty, I'm just after functional. And here's the tool. Um, I think I got this at Menards. Okay, now um, I've cut the the hole. I didn't have a hole saw that size, so I used a um, rotary rotary drill. Um, I forget what you call it. I put it on my Dremel. It's got a rotary bit, and I cut it and sanded it. Uh, if you got the right size hole saw to make your life a lot easier. Um, just dry fitting everything here to make sure that that's what I want. Um, and to me, this is the most complicated part of this whole project is just doing this, the drum for the roller furler. And you can see there, I'm going to, um, you know, pull everything apart. I'm going to prime it and glue it together in the next video. Uh, but this is the sizes that I'm using for a 16 foot Precision sailboat, your size may be a little bit different. Um, now, getting ready to glue. I'm not trying to teach you how to glue things, but the, I went ahead and primed everything um, and glue everything. But as I was saying, uh, each boat, um, I have a 26 foot McGregor uh, S or the classic, and I would not. Put this on there. Um, I used a CDI roller furler just because of the you know the forces at play. Uh, people do um, it would work, but just you know buyer beware. Uh, you, you may save money, but if you're getting out there and you're sailing and something breaks, um, you may get in a situation that's that's not fun. But I think for smaller dinghies, this is fine. I think you could go up to probably 20, 22 foot. It'd be okay. 
Um, this glue I'm using is the Universal. It's for CPVC and PVC. Um, and that's why I sand it, so I can push those down in real nice easily. Um, as you can see, it was really hard getting all that foam off. It's not very pretty, but it's functional. Uh, put my spacer, and I almost forget to put the other side on. Caught myself just the last second. Just about, oh, nope, nope. Put that on. Yeah, there you go. That would have been a bummer. Okay, now just let it dry and uh, clean it up a little bit. I tried cleaning with acetone, but acetone melts PVC, so uh, don't do that. Uh, it didn't damage anything, but uh, I was trying to get that foam residue off. I used mineral spirits, and that was a little bit better. But good enough. It's going to be in front of the boat and all rolled up. Here I laid everything out. Uh, if this was a new sail, I would not be laying it out on concrete, but it's a 30-year-old sail. It's still functional. I'm um, just laying it out so I can get some ideas on how to attach. So attachment methods for the head and the tack. I'm using Dyneema. And you can see here, um, I drilled a couple of holes so that I could run the Dyneema. I sanded those holes to make sure they didn't cut it. And then uh, in a later shot, I'll show you how I did the tack. Uh, i getting ready to hoist it up. I just didn't feel like dropping the mast. The extra lines you see there in the pulley system, that is just for stepping the mast. It goes away when I'm sailing. Um, the two lines kind of in the middle of the mast, those keep the mast from sliding sideways. I've been working on it. We had a break in the weather here in, in uh, southwest Ohio, so I've been working on the boat. Getting, then I put it back to, to sleep until sailing season. But uh, anyways, I didn't feel like moving the car into trailers, so I just ran a messenger line, pulled it up. Um, you may be asking, how did I attach the sail? And by the way, this is 125% uh, Genoa. And how did I attach it to the PVC? Well, it was lazy and I took those plastic hanks off and I cable tied, two cable ties per uh, grommet to the PVC. Um, because the tack and the head are securely fastened, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble with it rolling if it's under pressure. Uh, here I'm getting the turnbuckle attached, and then I'm going to loosen up that pulley that I have running there from the trailer that I only use for stepping the mast. That goes um, to the vang when I get the mast all set up. So got it adjusted and it'll be pinned don't worry um, now here is the tack detail and I just ran the Dyneema through a couple of times didn't really need to but I had too much rope uh, now I'm going to furl and unfurl and you can see that I use cable ties and I, I got that from one of my colleagues that on one of the Facebook groups if it doesn't function as I expect, then I will get the the brass type hank-ons and then I will notch the PVC and then I can connect straight on to the forestay. I know people say, well, you got to be connected to the forestay, but on a small boat like this, I think it's going to be fine. I think the pressure of the sail in the PVC um, it, it should work okay but if it breaks something breaks just put it away and, and make the mods all in all I got about 50 bucks in PVC parts um, the the line I think the the Dyneema is going for probably about 50 cents a foot I don't know uh, depends on who you buy it from um, you can use you know, quarter inch for a little line. You don't need to use Dyneema. I just happen to have it. Um, 
But this belt was already set up with a roller furler, um, but I think he started to, the guy, the previous owner started it, to, and he just never finished. So anyway, I just went ahead and started all over again, and I hope this helps. Um, would would I do this on a bigger boat? Um, maybe. I have a CDI FF2 on my McGregor 26S. Um, it was very difficult to install, and but it's built for the pressures, and it's built for a boat that size. Um, I, I don't know. It, it depends on where I'd be sailing and what kind of sailing I'd be doing. I think on a this is a 16 foot boat. I think it's going to be fine. Um, I see a lot of people in the marina with this. Um, so I hope this video helps. If you got any questions, just uh, shoot me shoot me a message or something, and I'll see if I can help. Thanks.